So they want to hear it. So 85% of us want to hear your success stories, brag. And then 12% of us don't. And then uh, the other 3% will turn around and brag about themselves. So I thought that was really significant that we do want to hear success stories. We do need a map. We want to see that you are successful because then we can believe and have hope that we can be successful too. Hey, it's Samantha Hartley of the Profitable Joyful Consulting Podcast. This season, we are talking about empowering women. And one of the big ways I want to empower women is to help them to talk about themselves, be bigger, be bolder, make bold claims, and like really like talk about your accomplishments. So when I came across Lisa Bragg and her book on LinkedIn, I was like, I need to talk to her and she needs to come and share what she is doing with bragging with my audience of women consultants so we can all just like share generously. How often do you feel like uh, you've been shamed or um, prevented from really like just like crowing about what you're doing? And when I find other women who are doing it, I get so excited. Like I really love to cheer them on and I really love to see other women who are doing that. And that is exactly what Lisa Bragg is doing is she's out there teaching women how to brag in ways that are like congruent and aligned and don't feel yucky, but also aren't like falsely modest, like let go of that nonsense. As I say to her in this one, I really feel like, you know, say we more than I and like, don't talk about yourself so much, like really talk more about the team. Like those are notes that were given to men because that's what men did. And you don't need to give that note to women. Women will naturally include the team. They will naturally share accomplishments. Lisa Bragg has literally written the book on how to talk about success. Her book, Bragging Rights, How to Talk About Your Work Using Purposeful Self-Promotion, launched in May, and she's a speaker, advisor, and professional mentor. So I hope you will enjoy this conversation. It's pretty lively. And start to brag more about your work. Lisa Bragg, so tell us a story of a client that you work with or someone that you helped with your process, what was going on with them before, what you did with them, and uh, how things worked out. Yeah, you know, there's some, several stories in the book, but one I really like is someone who, Neela, for so long, she was the subject matter expert. She was talking about what she wanted to. She was passionate about people. And as we get older, making sure that we have the right things in place for elder care. And we always think that we're going to live to 95, 105, and then drop dead. And she's trying to tell people, you have to plan for this because so few people are actually that person. And she kept telling these stories and talking about it, but she wasn't getting the traction that she thought she would. And because she wasn't willing to actually own that she was the expert in it, she would just say, I know about this, or you know what, I'll go get another certificate in it and another one and another one. I think she still is getting more certificates, but not as many now where she's actually telling people, hey, look, I am the expert in this. I know what I'm talking about. Here's what it is. And really transferring her knowledge in a really good, positive way. And so many of us are taught to be hidden gems. And she was also taught to, you know, wait for somebody to find you and come seek your knowledge instead of saying, hey, here's what I'm here to do. Here's how I'm here to serve. And I'm going to tell you all about it. So so we worked together for a little while in some group coaching that I was doing. And then I even came into her office and helped her there to uh, to really be seen and be heard. And then she was doing national level conferences and now she's doing so many great things and being on panels. And so I was able to take her from this expert who deserved to be seen and heard. And then now she's on national stages and really connecting her message with her ideal clients. So I think that was really one of the significant ones because people really needed to hear her message and uh, and she's doing well. So I'm so excited to see her. I think she's yeah. yeah. Uh, that's terrific. So what what do you feel like is the thing that she heard that kind of flipped the switch for her? Yeah, I think it was that so many of us are taught to be hidden gems and to wait for yeah. someone else to choose you. And I think that's what we hear. And so often, so many of us in school, we are wait till we're chosen or wait till yeah. we have the row of gold stars or the next level for, for that to happen. But no one's going to find us on our tiny piece of the internet without us waving our banner and saying, hey, over here, come look at me. Right. I think that's what it was, was giving her permission to, first of all, own that she was an expert because she surely was. She didn't just watch two TED Talks and read, you know, Harvard Business Review or some periodical in her field. She was truly an expert. So she owned it already. 
She just needed somebody to say, yes, you are an expert. And then also the person to say, now you need to tell the world about it. So I think those are really distilling it down to simple things. That's what it is, is that permission that you give yourself. Don't wait for the next gold star. You are it today. Love it. Love it. So uh, your last name is Bragg. It seems like you're kind of destined to do this work. So what is it in your background that you feel like um, led you to do what you do? Well, it goes back to when I was a teenager. You know, I was about 13, the age my daughter is now. And I realized brag meant something to other people. I didn't know until I'd hear people say, oh, you're going to brag about it when I'd get good marks or get on honor roll or get on, you know, a new team. And and I'd hear that from jealous, I don't know what, but all the other people. And I realized that that was a problem. So I started to hide my successes as a teenager. You know, I didn't want to be seen. I, you know, I didn't go for high school grade rep or anything like that. I was in grade nine uh, at a middle school. We had grade nine there and I was there. But once I found out that, oh, I'm being too seen and be heard, I need to diminish my light for other people. I learned that young and it kept with me. And I think a lot of us learned that young. But then I went to uh, broadcasting. I was a broadcast journalist, anchor TV uh, person for a while. Because I really wanted to help people be seen and heard. I realized it was my mission. My family isn't a group of people that are seen and heard. They are working class people and they're not very networked. And so I realized they were missing opportunities in life. And I wanted people like them to be seen and heard. And so broadcasting, I would often go, broad journalists are often part of the pack. And so they go together because nobody wants, there's extreme FOMO that if you missed out on one clip, from that person, the fear of missing out is real. Yeah. And you get that one clip and then everyone else doesn't have that clip. It's a problem. So, but I always like to go the opposite direction to my peers. And I'd find the experts that I thought would really give something different to a story. So I'd go and say, hey, expert, I'd like to interview you. And so often she would say, go down the hall, go back to Bob or John or Peter or Smith. You know, they'd go down there and follow the pack. And I'd say, no, 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 you are the expert. And who, me? And yes, you. And so when I would get to do a tiny bit of media coaching and encourage them to do it, and they said, yes, it was beautiful because not only did they did they get media with me, then someone else came along and said, you are the expert, let me interview you. And they'd have that experience. And then I'd see their career go on to you know the next steps and panels, or they'd get a promotion, or they'd get a bigger job, all the things that they deserved already because they were already the expert. I didn't make them the expert. They yeah. were already. And it was magical to see it happen. And I still have the thank you cards today. And then the last step in my red thread of when I look back at it is I started one of Canada's first uh, content companies. So back in the day before content was content, video animation, e-learning and helping subject matter experts uh, at car- corporations and then government get online through video for the first time. So helping them to be seen and heard. And then we'd see great things happen with their careers and it would be amazing. And then inevitably on the walk to the elevator with the leader in charge of the initiative, she would say to me, Lisa, I see what's happening with these people. How can you help me do that? And that's where I realized, you know what? There really is something to this. And uh, I decided to do one of the largest research surveys on bragging and self-promotion because I realized there's a lot more to this than just my red thread there's a lot more for us to unpack on it. So so that's the journey of what uh, brought me to writing a book and, and how I'm here of service today. Super. So I love the, uh, well, I mean, it's obviously it's an amazing journey and uh, you're doing great work. And I love uh, uh, seeing um, women claiming their expertise. So I would love to hear what some of what you learned, like what stood out to you in the research study as like the the big drivers of, I would say, you know, too much humility and the opportunities that women have and experts have to to brag more. Yeah, I love the research part. I'm so glad I just didn't decide to do. Here's my experiences, yeah. like, which would have been good, but because the research really makes it over the top. So people from all over the world reported on this too. Because when I started out, I thought I thought this was a Canadian thing. And then I realized I was talking to several different people in the U.S., in yeah. Midwest and they said, oh no, that's me. And then I was in line in something and a woman from who's so well quaffed and who had been on boards and sophisticated and just, I said, well, here's the premise of what I'm doing. And she said, Lisa, 
I'm Catholic. Of course, this book is for me and what you're doing. And so, yeah. so go for it. And then I found out that it's actually international. Mm-hmm. So many of us have been taught and trained that bragging is icky and that we yeah. should wait and and so on and so forth. So that was really interesting. But what I found on the flip side is that actually 85% of us want to hear you brag. And bragging, I define, is it's talking about your successes with pride. And that's in the dictionary. But pride can also mean self-love. Yeah. And so yeah. that's what the difference is when we think about bragging. So they want to hear it. So 85% of us want to hear your success stories brag. And then 12% of us don't. And then uh, the other 3% will turn around and brag about themselves. So I thought that was really significant that we do want to hear success stories. We do need a map. We want to see that you are successful because then we can believe and have hope that we can be successful too. And so I thought that was beautiful. And then 90% of people realize that we need to do it more. And so that was interesting. And then I also did a literature review and studied the research that had already been done and was frankly actually disappointed. And that's what gave me fuel to make sure that I did the more investigation into what I was talking about because most of it had been done on small samples of American university students. So these are young people who are 20, 21 years old. Yeah. When you're that age, you want to fit in, right? We want to fit in. But when you climb the career pyramid, triangle, whatever we're doing here, pyramid and triangle, same thing. But when we're doing things, we need to also stand out as we also fit in. And I think that's the the true piece of it. So I can talk research all day. So let me know what you want. Well, I think the interesting thing, I mean, I also talk research every day because I think people are so interesting um, or all day. Uh, what stands out to me about that too is that uh, um, maybe as uh, students, they might not feel that they have that much to brag about yet. But once you get into the workplace, what people will really rapidly find out when you're in a competitive work environment is that either you are going to talk about your own accomplishments or you're rapidly going to see other people often less uh, accomplished people passing you by because they were the ones who had the nerve to speak up and you were the one who um, ends up lagging behind. And I feel like in self-employment, and this is one of the reasons I wanted to have you on to talk to our audience of um, self-employed women consultants, uh, self-employed people rapidly also realize, hey, um, that guy's getting all the work and I'm actually much better. And sometimes that gal's getting all the work, but I actually think I'm as good as or better than that person. And I'm like, yeah, what's different? That person is putting themselves out there. That person's taking the risks uh, and speaking up. And so I do think that that is a thing that, um, you know, what your uh, research tells me. And uh, how, so how do we overcome that? How do, how do you help your, um, your clients to push that boundary a little more? Yeah, you are absolutely right in all of that. And you know, it's taking the steps to do the tactics is one thing, but it's a lot of mindset work first. And I'm sure you coach about the mindset for sure. But it, it's really realizing that we are trained to be this way, to be hidden gems, to hide mm-hmm. ourselves, to not talk about our accomplishments. We are trained uh, from generations, a lot of us. And it's because we're part of the factory system. So we are taught to put your head down, do good work, and eventually someone will notice you. The cream will rise to the top. And it's for anyone, corporate or self-employed. But we get this idea that we should wait and be chosen. And that's the problem with that. And so some things, so mindset, imposter syndrome, which I call imposter experience, because we're all having it now all the time because we're always stretching, especially those of us who are self-employed. We're trying something new. We're not under this big umbrella, able to hide until we figure it out. No, no, no. We're out there all the time, figuring it out in real time. So it's an, it's an experience that we're all going through. And eventually, once you master something, you're going to jump to something else or jump to a higher level client base or wider client base or whatever it is that you're going to jump to. So we always keep jumping. So understanding that and understanding, too, that our families don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> and even in our own family, you know, bragging, self-promotion is often taboo. You don't do that because they only see you in that old light. They don't see you as that consultant that you need to shine brightly and put on airs. Like they don't see it the way that we need to perform so that people can find us. So so there's lots of tactics in the book. It has all lots of sections, but I really want to make sure that if we have a mindset that we are here to serve, that's the first thing. Mm-hmm. So change your mindset of that. It's all about me and all of how great I am. And it's yeah. not about that. 
It's about bragging is about how you're here to serve and not be a servant. That's one thing that's come up after the book is that people have a very much the servant uh, mindset. It's in a lot of the business periodicals right now of being a servant mindset. Servant doesn't mean servitude. It doesn't mean I ring a bell and I come and somebody comes in and they do my work and then they leave quietly. No, 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 no. To be of service. That's what it is. And all of you are of service. So we need to let people know. And so it's telling people, here's how I'm here to serve. And then we can partner together and then we can do bigger things. That's the goal. So if you think of bragging as being of service, that's the first place to start and growing from there. And there's lots of tricks. So let me know where. (laughs) Well, well, I mean, I'll tell you that I have a... um... I respect it and I have a little bit of an issue with the idea of serve uh, and being servant uh, in service because I feel like that is a term that was intended that like to tell men like maybe you should think maybe about being a little more of a servant whereas women I feel like the term for us is to lead Uh, so uh, to me what women need to lead and we need to stop doing the service and start doing the leadership and I think um, I, I totally hear where you're coming from and when I think we have this, like, I don't want to speak up too much and I don't want to say how great I am. It's like, no, not necessarily it's not about how, how great you are, but about what great things you can do and lead people through your example to the things that you can help them with. So to me, that's the, the and I respect the use of the word serve because I do think that it helps for, for many people. It really helps them get over whatever is in the way of being able to speak up um, more about themselves. But I did just want to go back here. Value. Sorry about that. It's yeah. talking about your value. That's what yep. I meant. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, And uh, we need that value. And a lot of the times the value is that you're showing us something and you're uh, you're helping companies. And yes, it is in service to them. Uh, And a lot of times it's like leading them in the the ways that things can be different. And uh, I I just want to implore more women to like really pick up the reins and say, actually, I can do this. And um, more of those people who are like bragging in more negative ways, I think, are the, the men who kind of um, modeled so negatively modeled bragging that it is um, that it, it's that we have to talk today about how to do it the right way. That's uh, to me. Yeah, the exactly. Issue. Because that's the whole attitude of that. It made it icky because what they what we actually think of, though, is self aggrandizement. Yeah, but because it's a $50 word. It's not yeah. a small word. It's not brag. Brag is so easy to yeah. say. Yeah. But self aggrandizement is that, oh, I'm better than you. I'm going to put you down and I'm up here and you're down there. That's what is actually the icky part of it. But we've just made the same word. We've made bragging the, the bad word, the taboo word. But it's you're absolutely right. Women don't need to hear that humility and modesty be more modest. That modest is a trick word. And if you look in the dictionary, it's usually about women and their clothing. And it's not about men. So why is that? And so, yes, men do need to often turn it down. Well, women shouldn't watch, read those periodicals because we need to amp it up and own our space. And we need to do it because it's often scary because we've been taught to be communal, pass the mic, be kind. And we've taught or be nice, not kind, be nice. So, and we, kind. but we've been taught those things. So we don't own our power yeah. and it's scary for us. And we do, there are penalties sometimes when we do these things. So that's why I really advocate helping each other along the way and not worrying about, I preach, I talk about collaboration over competition. So let's collaborate. And even if we are our competitors, how can we be seen together as both the experts, the leaders in this industry together? instead of going head to head, because not everyone's going to like, you know, you as a consultant or me as a consultant, they'll like the next person. And that's okay. But as long as we're out there putting our good messages out, then they're going to find us. And speaking up for it. Yeah. Well, I've always said that when there uh, are actual valid reasons and risks in uh, speaking up and um, standing up big. And for women, they have been, uh, well, let's see, being burned at the stake, uh, being murdered, uh, you know, there's plenty of, of uh, penalty for uh, speaking up, uh, being ostracized from your uh, family group or your community. So uh, scarlet lettering, you know, uh, historically and in our DNA, I think there are plenty of negative reasons for doing this. And I feel like every time someone steps over them, you know, we we have to acknowledge the existence of that in our culture and we do have to make safe places for this. So What I think is important is what you're saying, which is that we as women can do this for one another, where we can invite each other to 
to tell our our big stories. Like I love when women show up big. It's super impressive to me. And you were talking about um, the high percentage of people. Was it eighty five percent of people want to see want to want to see other people brag about themselves? And I think LinkedIn is such a good example of that because what I think people realize is when you post these um, things on LinkedIn, we just won this, or we just did this, whatever. Um, whenever those are posted. People will always tell me, like, I got so many people I don't even know who are, like, putting the hand clapping emoji on my post about that. And I'm saying, like, people on LinkedIn are looking for things to celebrate. It's an easy piece of engagement. So do celebrate on there and, um, you know, continue to tell your story on that platform because that is that is what that platform wants and it's what I think we want from each other. Samantha, I bet there's so many people in the audience saying, I have an award that I've never told anyone about. That happens all the time. Whenever I whenever I talk to groups of people, it's like, well, I have an award that I won and we haven't told anyone about it. And it's like, totally. why haven't you? It can be three years old, five years old, because you can then say, hey, yeah. I'd like to see the winners of this year. I won an X year and it did this for me. You can bring yeah. that out and win it. It can be a throwback Thursday or whatever it's called nowadays. Bring yeah. it out and let people know about it because people want to cheer you on. And it's great for all the people who who may consider you to hire you. Like they want to be able to see that you are a winner. We want to be with winners. Winners want to be with winners. And that's the thing. It's a halo effect. If I can see that you're winning and doing good work in the world, then I know, okay, someone has said that that is somebody of value. I should go and find them. And, you know, I frankly, so many people, well, I have to nominate myself. Yes, you do. You know, it's nice to be nominated by other people. But yeah. people are so busy doing all their own do that they don't have time to nominate you. They might think this the world of you and they would love to do it, but life gets in the way. So you do have to nominate yourself yeah. and don't be embarrassed by it because so many other people are. Those great big corporations that are winning awards, they did put their name forward. So I always caution yeah. people on what you pay and make sure that it's legitimate, something yeah, that right. you read and you participate in. You don't want just something, you know, any kind of knockoff award or something that you're continually paying for. So so yeah. be aware of what you're, you are getting into, that it's of quality, but nominate yourself and give yourself that pat on the back for sure. For real. I think that's a great um, point. And uh, the Oscar nominated movies nominate themselves. There's campaigns for that. Like, why not for people as well? Like campaign for yourself. You know, I always think when um, when if somebody reads something about someone else and they feel kind of like, oh, she's doing whatever, I always feel like, why is that triggering? Why is that triggering to you? Like, that's work that we need to do on ourselves, usually. If if seeing somebody else touting their accomplishments makes you feel upset, then what do you need to do? Is it that you feel like, I'm not talking about my accomplishments? Well, if so, then do. Or is it like, oh, she's so whatever. Really? Why are you feeling that way? Because a lot of times that's our internalized um, misogyny coming out. And I, you know, I've had to listen to those voices for years and, un, you know, deprogram all of my, um, you know, you have the the Canadian version of the thing that I have the Southern version of, which is like, that's not what women do. So, Let's just unpeel that. And um, as I love to tell uh, women who have children, like, don't give that to another generation. Like, can we just get rid of this so that we don't carry this into the future? I don't I don't have children, but I'm like, please, would all of you raise your girls so that they'll brag on themselves because I want to hear it from them. I want to hear it from them, too. And in the book, I talk about my daughter because they're going around and talking about all their awards in their room. They're sharing their awards and it's beautiful and it's so pure. And they're both they're all so excited for each other. But then as you get older, we get, you know, but you put that lid on all of that as success. So I would love it if we, first of all, yes, help the next generation, but help each other right now. Like, let's change the culture today and not wait for something to change in the world for us to then say, let's cel- celebrate each other. No, no, no. Let's celebrate. And, you know, you're being a light right here by sharing my story and having me on and helping me along the way. Like, how beautiful is that? So I appreciate that. And the more you do it for other people, the better it gets. And people who share this episode, you're doing the same thing. And so that's where we can shine a light on others and bring them along. My goal is that I don't want to, it's not about being in the spotlight. I want this to be daylight for all of us where accomplishments can be seen and heard so that people can then see the right person for the job instead of hiring somebody who's actually mediocre. And so if all of us 
take off that corrosive invisibility cloak that we've been told to wear, it will be that much better of a world. And I know I probably sound Pollyanna-esque to some people, but it's true. If I know who to go to because I can see them, then I'm going to get something better out of it. It's, exactly. it's it's happened over and over and over again. So it's the world I want. Also, you kind of alluded to this, but I think it's the Oprah quote where she says, um, you can't compete with me. I want you to win, too. And I, I really feel like that's to me the evolved version of the way that um, I grew up in competition with girls and women is uh, I actually I want you to win, too. And when I see someone bragging, I feel so excited. And by the way, I want to brag on you real quick because Seth Godin blurbed your book. Like, well done, ma'am. Blurred by Seth Godin. Here we go. Smart, kind, and useful. It's the sort of inside insight you'll be glad you paid attention to. That's what he writes about your book. It's the sort of insight you'll be glad you paid attention to. So uh, beat that. How'd you get the blurb from Seth? I asked him. So, yeah. What? I asked him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? did. So yes. I mean, wait for him to kind of notice you. Yeah, he's not going to notice me. He has so many things going on, like unbelievable. Not, what is it, 19 New York Times bestsellers? That might be a wrong number, but you get yeah, the point. Cool. So just international acclaim. And it was actually a really scary story for me. I had sent the book to, uh, so I had all my editors and all the, the people through the publishing group that uh, that did the book, an amazing job. But I sent it first to two to friends that are professional friends that, I was like, oh my goodness, I am naked sending this to you. <laughs> it was like yeah. very, it was, here is my, here's what I've been working on for the last year. And essentially my body of work that I've been thinking about for a long time. Do you, do you like it? And so he sent back a few notes and I, okay, I'm the next person I'm going to send it to is Seth Godin. <laughs> so wow. I jumped into the pot, whatever you want to say. I jumped in and sent it. And I just sent a little letter saying, here's what it is you know, would you consider? And I had also, he has rules about these things. I followed the rules mm -hmm. to make sure that as this person has set out rules for me to approach them, what would that be? And so this can apply to your consulting business too. This person has rules. They are insulated, but he was very approachable. He said, "It, you know, it, it, I probably don't have time, but send it along anyway. And so I got his review back so quickly. I was in an airport and I was just dancing when I saw that he had blurbed the book. So, and he also wrote me a little note about my storytelling too. So it was like, oh, you know, just, hooray, hooray. And so that, and so that's a celebration. That is a brag right there. But it depends all in context. Yeah. If, because you are celebrating me. You're not feel, feeling that it's overbearing or boastful or self-aggrandizing. Mm -hmm. you're, you're in celebration with me. And, but if we were talking to people who felt less than, they would think, oh, well, listen to her brag about getting this and doing that. And that's where that ickiness feels. But yeah, um, yeah it's uh, you have to ask, though, to get the success you want. And you have to be seen and be heard to to get that. So that's the critical piece of it. So and you have to surround yeah. yourself with people who are who can handle you, who can who are also I mean, there's a lot of people now who are talking about like being the the dumbest person in the room or the smallest person. I'm like, be around people who won't be won't feel small by you being your big self and I feel like I want people to be their biggest self like people can be super big around me um because I it, it just lights me up so I wanted to hear an example like what's a what's an example of a can you model for us what it sounds like to brag about something um and maybe it's one of yours or maybe a client or or, or one of each, just because I'd really like to hear a couple of contrasting ways that someone could brag about something and do it in like an organic way. Yeah. So one of the most popular ways is we'll go back to the example of you won something, you still haven't put it on LinkedIn and people are uh -huh. so afraid or they'll put humbled before it. So okay. I want us to all eliminate the word humbled from our dictionary. It is gone unless you're coaching someone else on it. But don't use that word. Get rid of it in anything that you write or say. You're not humbled. Don't write that. You can write you're proud if you want to, but I'd prefer not. I'd prefer you say, here's what I won and why right off the top. And then you could add because. So I won this award. I, it, it was that I had the most con successful consultancy. And then you can add the word because, because because is a softener. 
You know, mm-hmm. back in the 1970s, L'Oreal started it with their first hair care commercials. And it was revolutionary because a woman was talking to camera about herself. Because before, all the men would just comment on it. They would be the announcers. And so this revolutionary news concept. And a young copywriter, she wrote about, you know, she, she wrote that I'm worth it because I'm worth it. And so women were able to say, because I'm worth it, that because sentence allowed people to then stretch beyond and say, okay, I am worth it. So that's where I ta- I go into the story a little bit more in the book, but because is a softener, a mm-hmm. joiner that allows people to accept what you're saying. If you have a because, it just, uh, it's something in our brains that allow allows it. So, so I won Super. this award. Mm-hmm. I stretched to being a seven, eight figure consultant because whatever that would be, uh, because of mm-hmm. my team. But always good. go first, because we're not an Oscar speech where we forget about ourselves. And we don't mm-hmm. like list off all the people. Well, you'll see that on LinkedIn. They'll list 10 people first. And then, oh, I won an award. Like, yeah. don't do that. You need to talk about your successes first. In journalism, we call it burying the lead. So you bury the point. Don't bury the point. You are the point. Put it up top. People want to see success. Another thing is people want to see one person win. So while we're on a team, you need to be the person that you're focusing on. You do. A leader. A leader, that one person. So put yourself first. And I know we're not used to that, especially as women, because no matter what, your parents come first, your kids come first, your dogs, your cats, your whatever, everything comes first. And somehow, you know, we put everyone first in our, in our lives. And so in, when you are self-promoting and bragging, especially in the business context, make sure that you're out in front. Another thing that I want you to do too as consultants, because I, you know, owning my own business, I buried myself in my work. I was lost. So owning the content company, Media Face, I was the CEO, but I wasn't Lisa Bragg. And so if there's ever a problem with your company, you need to also have yourself as a brand. Like I am Lisa Bragg. I am a person, but I also have distinct thinking and values that are entwined in the business, but also that it's a little suitcase that I can take away. So making sure that you're not just putting everything into, you know, your XYZ Corp, XYZ Corp, but it's also that you are able to walk away and be your full self too. So that it's your professor's brand in in addition to it. Yeah. Just, it doesn't have to be more work, but I just, what I did, what I ended up doing was I didn't know where media face, my company started and where I started and I was doing everything for my title. And so that's when I just caution every consultant out there is make sure that you're seen as a wider person. There's more depth and breadth to you because then opportunities can come to you in a more fulsome way. They're not just going to hire you as that one vein of consultancy, which we do want, but then they can see ahead for you and maybe think of, oh, well, that's a paid board position that would suit her perfectly. So they can see you because you also need to be transmitting your future. So many of us worry about our reputation, about the past and that we are good girls and we did all these good things and have certificates and clients of this stature. But what I want you to transmit is the you of the future. Mark it to who you want to be, not worrying about your reputation. So we brand to where we want to go and not the past. So those are a few things I think that I've given you. Love it, love it, love it. Start it right now. Awesome. Awesome. So if uh, obviously if people want uh, to buy the book, I assume they can buy that at all of the the places books are sold. Um, where else should people go to find out more about you? Yeah. And I also have an audio book and an ebook too. So yes, it's available everywhere. But find me at lisabragg.com. I might have a website and of course, and then also on social media, I'm very active on LinkedIn, but on social cha- other social channels, I'm at that Lisa Bragg too. And it's Bragg with two G's, B-R-A-G-G. So Fort Bragg or Bragg Creek, where it is that Bragg. So if you uh, want to search for me and hashtag anything that you want me to cheer for you, hashtag it bragging rights and I will find okay. it and cheer you on because I really believe that's part of my mission is helping people be seen and be heard and cheering you on as you start to take that one step of courage forward because you're going to say, oh, I'll do that when I'm confident. It's good for confident people, but it's yeah. not about confidence. It's about having courage. So take one step of courage, another one and another one and send me that hashtag and I will follow up with you and, and put it out in the world for you. So I want to see more people bragging. That's my, that's my big goal. 
Yay, me too. I love seeing people bragging, as you know, and um, we share we share a mission in wanting uh, women to be able to be their biggest, best selves, and while they're at it, to be profitable and joyful. So with that, Lisa and I, Lisa, thank you so much. I just enjoyed hearing this so much. I'm inspired by you um, and excited and to know more and to see more of you, and I'm very glad to our friend who connected us. And so with that, though, thank you. And Lisa and I are wishing you a profitable and joyful consulting business.